ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما narrated a hadith that's collected in a tabarani in which the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said قل هو الله احد ثلث القران سوره الاخلاص تعديل ثلث القران is equal the reward of it is equal to one third of the quran وقل يا ايها الكافرون تعديل ربع القران and surah al kafirun it is equal the reward of it is equal to one fourth of the quran these two chapters from the quran al ikhlas and kafirun it's not about any thing that you have to do or stay away from but it's about the concept of tawhid that you do tawhid believe in tawhid of allah and you stay away from shirk al ikhlas is all about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and al kafirun is the confirmation that you believe in al ikhlas that allah is one and only these two surahs as has been reported in sahih muslim from jabir ibn abdullah radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam recited these two surahs in the two units the raka'atain ba'da tawaf after you make tawaf you pray two units he would pray those two units with al kafirun and ikhlas in another hadith in sahih muslim from abu huraira radiyallahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would pray with these two surahs kafirun and ikhlas in the sunnah of salatul fajr in another hadith in an-nasa'i and in the musnad of ahmad and others from ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would use these two surahs recite these two surahs qabla al-fajr wa ba'd al-maghrib the sunnah of salatul fajr the two units before the fard and the two units after which is the sunnah of maghrib and also we have that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would recite these two surahs in the witr if you pray three rak'at for the witr the first rak'ah is subbih isma rabbika la'la then al kafirun and then the third rak'ah surah al ikhlas so from the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as you can see he would recite these two surahs multiple times in the day the moment you wake up in the morning the sunnah of fajr you proclaim the oneness of allah and you disassociate yourself from the mushrikun when the day comes to an end in maghrib you end the day again proclaiming the oneness of allah and disassociating yourself from the mushrikun and those who pray tahajjud you pray qiyamul layl right before you sleep you're again doing these reciting these two surahs in another hadith in abu daud from nawfal radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said iqra qul ya ayyuhal kafirun thumma nam ala khatimatiha fa innaha bara'atun min ash-shirk recite surah al kafirun right before you go to sleep for indeed it is a freedom it frees you from shirk it is a declaration that you 
are free from shirk. So inshallah ta'ala, seeing how we are in the month of November and December and January, these two months, we are in a kafir country. There's a lot of non-Muslim holidays going around. And there are many Muslims who don't see any problem in what the mushrikun do. Many times we see Muslims, their children, in their families. You had Halloween, you saw Muslim kids trick-or-treating dressed like shayateen and trick-or-treating. And their fathers and mothers are paying money to buy clothing to dress their children like a shaitan, as a Muslim. They did this, and they do it. And then comes Thanksgiving, then comes Christmas, then comes Hanukkah, then comes the New Year. So many kuffar celebrations in these two months. You have to understand what this Surah Al-Kafirun means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O you who disbelieve. This surah containing six ayat, it was revealed in Mecca. There's context. The Quraysh, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at one point, seeing that this man is not going to stop what he's talking about. They wanted to make a deal, a political deal of give and take, because that's what politicians do, right? So they said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how about this? You worship our idols for one year, and the next year we'll worship Allah alone. Then again the next year you worship our idols, and then again the next year, let's be with everyone. This is the deal that they wanted to make. At that moment, Allah revealed this surah. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ They want to make a deal with you like this, as if tawheed and shirk can coexist. As if Islam and all the shirky religions can coexist. That as a Muslim, you can worship Allah, pray, but also you can celebrate Christmas. As a Muslim, you can pray, but also go do Diwali. As a Muslim, you can pray, but also you can do Adunday. It doesn't matter what country you're from. The Asian people, you like doing Hindu celebrations. There are many Arab and Western Muslims, they do Christian and Jewish celebrations. There are many African Muslims who do African pagan celebrations. Every region of this world has kufri celebrations from different religions. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhal kafirun, O you who disbelieve. Every single person who's a disbeliever. La a'budu ma ta'budun. You make this very clear, this distinction. I do not worship what you worship. When the Quraysh came with this deal, the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to let them know we are not the same. I don't worship what you worship. You worship all these aliha. The Hindus are worshiping their gods, different gods. Even if they say God, the Christian says they believe in God, but he's worshiping Isa ﷺ and Maryam. The Quraysh, they believed in Allah, but they had Allah, wal Uzza, wal Manat and many other aliha along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never disbelieved in Allah. They were not atheists. But they committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد And you don't worship what I worship. So when the non-Muslim comes to you, oh, we all believe in the same God and we worship the same God. No. Your message has to be exactly what Allah says in this surah. You do not worship what I worship. I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. My kalima is la ilaha illallah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Allah knows best what you worship. We're not the same. We're not worshiping the same being. We're not worshiping the same ilah. Rabbul alameen. Then, وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدْ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ And you're reinforcing that I will not worship what you worship. There's no way that you can make me give up my religion. This is the confidence that a Muslim is supposed to have. Allah is commanding us, proclaim this. Those who come to you, 
try to force you to change your religion, try to scare you to change your religion and give up the religion of Tawheed, to fall into shirk. You emphasize that point again. I will not worship what you worship. I'm happy worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدْ And you reiterate that point, that you do not worship what I worship. Because what you worship, you have made these things up. As Allah says elsewhere in the Qur'an multiple times, for example, إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّ وَمَا تَهْوَ الْأَنفُسِ what the mushrikun, the disbelievers worship, what they do, the religions that they have made up, it is nothing but their assumptions. And that which they desire. It's not a religion based on revelation. It's not the religion of the Anbiya of Allah. The religions that they made up, it is based on assumptions and their desires. Even though, the Huda, the true guidance has come down from their Lord, but they reject it. They turn away from it. And then finally, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ To you, your religion, and to me, mine. What is that religion? There's this disbelief, kufr and shirk. And my deen is the deen of Islam. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Indeed, the religion with Allah is Islam, and it always was. From the very first human being, our father, Adam, and Hawa, our mother, they didn't worship the sun or the moon or trees or monkeys or rats or Jesus or this or that. Adam alayhi salam worshipped Allah. Our mother Hawa worshipped Allah. The very first religion on earth was Islam. Every messenger came with Islam. And the final religion is Islam. And no other religion except for Islam is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You Muslims who are raising your children in these countries, you have to make sure your children know that this religion is the only religion that Allah ever sent. They mix with the Christians, the Jews, the atheists, and then at one point when you look at that Muslim boy and the Muslim girl, you cannot distinguish her from the kafir girl. You cannot distinguish him from the kafir boy. But look what this surah is about. It is the entire message is, you have to distinguish yourself from the kafirun. You have to be different from the way you speak, the way you behave, the way you carry yourself, the things that you do, the things that you don't do. It has to be different because you are a Muslim. Different from the kafirun. Our shahada, when we're saying, La ilaha illallah, we're affirming that everything that comes, whatever we do or don't do, it is based on the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Muhammad rasulullah And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah. That you, we worship Allah alone with the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the way he did. You have to be confident in your religion. You have to be confident in your message that you stick to. Your character, your speech. Your manners, your actions, everything has to be unique and distinguished. Why does the Muslim woman dress the way she does? Because that is a symbol of Islam. Why does the Muslim man carry himself, wear certain things? Even as Muslim men, it's haram for us to wear skin-tight pants and t-shirts. We always talk about the hijab of the woman, but a lot of people don't talk about the hijab of the men. Even as Muslim men, we have a dress code. Even as Muslim men, we have a facial code. You all know what I'm talking about. Things that are ob obligatory upon us as Muslim men. Many times as husbands, as fathers, we don't see how we look like, but we're concerned too much with our wives and daughters, which is good. But you need to lead by example. If you tell your wife and daughter about hijab, but the lihya is missing on your face, it doesn't make, it's a contradiction. What is fard is fard. Your dress code is equally fard, just like her dress code. So you have to be the role model, the leader of the house, and lead by example. Not just hammer the women in the house. You do the things first and let the women follow you. So everything we do, everything we say, there are so many ahadith in Bukhari and Muslim and others. You see the hadith starts with khaliful mushrikeen. Khaliful Yahud, Khaliful Majus, Khaliful Nasara. 
be different from the mushrikun, be different from the Jews, be different from the Christians, be different from the fire worshippers. He first says this, then he says the command. Many hadith start in this manner. Because the point is, as a Muslim man and woman, you have to be distinguished in your behavior. The rest of people, they say, if you know how to cheat stuff, you're a smart businessman. But as a Muslim businessman, you stay away from cheating. Why? Because I believe in Allah. Allah revealed ayat in the Quran and how to do business. As a Muslim, you follow those ayat. And when people ask you, why are you like this? Because I believe in Islam and this is from the Sharia that I do business in this manner. Everything in life, you have to be distinguished as a Muslim, different from the non-Muslims. In everything that you do, everything that we eat, we drink, we wear, every step of the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated certain lifestyle for us that is unique to Islam and does not exist in other religions. This lakum dinukum waliyadin, this is similar to other ayat in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if they reject you, فَقُلِّ amali, Reply to those who reject you. For me is my deeds. وَلَكُمْ amalukum, And for you are your deeds. أَنْتُمْ بَرِيْءُونَ مِمَّا أَعْمَلُوا You are free from that which I do. وَأَنَا بَرِيْءٌ مِمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And I am free from that which you do. Very similar meaning. That you make it known. Even if the whole world is doing what they're doing, it doesn't make it right. Many of us, not just our young ones, but even the elders, peer pressure. You know, as they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans. But that doesn't work as a Muslim. It doesn't matter where you live, that you just follow people like blind sheep. Their deeds are not for them. Your deeds are for you as a Muslim. Their actions are free from your actions and your actions are free from their actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi to reply to the kafirun in this manner. For me are my deeds, for you are your deeds. You're free from me, I'm free from you. So if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was given this command, what about us? We have to follow this command as well. It's the same ayah. What they do is not our business. Your business is to know what Islam says. You follow that. Worry about yourself first as a Muslim. Because people come and ask, well, so many people are doing this and this people are doing that and that. The truth is not known by the numbers. What if the entire planet was committing shirk except for one human being? Are you going to say that we should all become disbelievers? Wasn't that the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam? When Ibrahim alayhi salam came, who in this entire world was a Muslim except for him, his wife Sara, and Lut alayhi salam, his relative? Three people on the, in the entire face of the earth. What about Nuh alayhi salam? When he came as a Rasul, nobody was following Islam. Not even his own wife and son accepted his message. He was by himself. Finally, after hundreds of years, maybe he found a few followers. So being from the minority is not an excuse. And as Muslims, we do this to each other. Sometimes we are lazy. If someone else becomes serious about their religion, we start making fun of that person. Oh, why are you being so serious about the religion? Look at everybody else. But everybody else does not own Jannah. Everybody else does not own Jannah and Jahannam. Allah is the creator of these two things, these two destinations. It doesn't matter what the people are doing. Their deeds are between them and Allah. I know what the truth is. I have to research. I have to strive. You focus on your own Islam and be distinguished as Muslims from those who are not Muslim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. This example or this command of being different was not just in the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Look what Allah says about Ibrahim. قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Indeed, you have an excellent example in Ibrahim alayhi salam and those who were with him. إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِهِمْ When they said to their people, إِنَّا بُرَآءُ مِنْكُمْ وَمِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Indeed, we are free from, what, from you and what you worship besides Allah. They made it very clear. Initially, Ibrahim salam was hiding the faith of Islam. But when Allah told him to proclaim, he didn't care that his father was the chief of the pagans. He had to go and proclaim his Islam openly. Made, them, made it very clear. I am free from you and what you worship besides Allah. وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ And between us and you, الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ أَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ And between us and you, there is a type of enmity and hatred forever, أَبَدًا, forever حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ But if you become Muslim, you accept Islam, we become brothers and sisters of one another. He had to make this statement to his own father. His own father. What about Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu? He was not a Rasul of Allah. He was not a Nabi of Allah. But he was a Sahabi of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu have to do? Something that no other Sahabi had to do. In the battle of Badr, his father was coming to kill Rasulullah. In order to defend Allah's messenger, he killed his own father in the battlefield. Can you imagine this fitna? What type of trial? Not a single one of us are tried in this manner. What would imagine your situation if you were in the battle of Badr? Your own father or mother is coming to kill Allah's messenger. Who will you defend? That is why we are not from the Sahaba. Because we look for the smallest excuse Oh, my wife will say this, my husband will say this, my father will say this, my daughter is not going to like me, my son is not going to like me, my cousin is not going to like me. We look for the smallest excuse not to practice Islam properly. But look at this test from Allah that Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah had to go through. And he did not hesitate. He warned his father once and that was it. These were the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa these are the people that we are supposed to imitate in our manners, in our aqidah, in our beliefs and practices. And lastly, we'll end with this ayah. This is a warning, severe warning for us living in these countries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. So directly addressing us as believers. Oh, you who believe. May yartadda minkum an dinihi. Whoever among you leaves the religion. Allah calls to the believers, O oh, you who believe, whoever among you turns away from Allah's religion, فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّهُمْ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ Allah will bring forth a group of people. You left the religion? Okay, Allah doesn't care. You following Islam or not following Islam does not harm Allah by the least. If you want to turn away from Islam, no problem. Allah will replace you with a group of people who love Him and He loves them. Adillatin ala al mu'minin, a'izzatin ala al kafirin. Who are people who are very humble towards the believers and they're very firm against the disbelievers. No disbeliever is able to sway them away from the religion. Wa yujahiduna fi sabilillah. And they strive in the path of Allah. وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْ مَتَلَائِمْ And they are not afraid of being labeled by the critiques. They're not afraid. Somebody calls the Muslim woman a ninja, a garbage bag. She's not afraid. She's not going to give up the hijab. The Muslim man is criticized. Hey, what are you doing? Wearing your younger brother's pants? Why is it above your ankle? He's not afraid of these mockery. What's going on? You look like you haven't shaved in like a month. What's going on? He's not afraid of these labels and mockery. He doesn't care what the non-Muslims are thinking. And we see this 
every day. Maybe not in person, but at least in the news. Again, we reiterate, look at these children of Gaza. Look at the people in Sudan. They're not giving up their religion. They don't care who's labeling them as what. They don't give up their religion. This is the blessing from Allah that He gives to whomever He wishes. To be able to hold on to your religion regardless of who is mocking you, who is with you or against you, what you have or don't have, that is the blessing of Allah. يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He gives to whomever He wishes. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. That is the true blessing of Allah. And we see this, this ayah being played out every single day. We have Muslim families, immigrant families, Arab, African Muslims, Asian Muslims. Many families are crying because their sons and daughters are not practicing Islam. Maybe their sons and daughters are running away with kuffar men and women. No Islam whatsoever. Some of them openly are atheists. What did Allah say here? You believers, these children are coming from believing families. When they were kids, they were Muslims. When they grow up and have a mind of their own and go to these colleges, they think, ah, I found freedom. Let me disbelieve in Allah. They think they discovered some miracle that never existed before. That's fine. You leave your religion. Allah will replace you every single day in this country, men and women become Muslim. Every single day, the son of a Christian, the son of a Jew, the son of an atheist, the daughter of an atheist. The girl was walking around naked yesterday, today she's Muslim, tomorrow she puts on the full hijab. They don't have a problem. But the immigrant family's children have a problem with the religion. This is the ayah. You want to leave the religion, leave. You are not going to harm Allah by the least. Allah will replace you with people who love him and he loves them back. Allah will replace you with people who make jihad fi sabilillah. They strive for their religion in, the, in his path. This is a stern warning to all of us, brothers and sisters. We live here, we raise our children here, but you need to know to how to preserve their Muslim identity. They have to hold on to their Islam. You can leave behind multi-million dollar businesses for your son and daughter, but the moment you die, they even forget what la ilaha illallah is. A billion dollars will not be more valuable than the religion of Islam. You have to get your priorities straight. Many times parents are saying, ah, we're old, it's okay. Let's see if the t children can learn properly. It doesn't work. Because you are being hypocritical. You want your son and daughter to learn, but you don't want to learn. The son and daughter is going to look. Okay, my dad's reading the ayats, but he doesn't practice it. So therefore, I don't have to practice it either. It does not work that way. You come to Islam as a family. Show your daughter and son that you as a father are serious about your religion. Show your daughter and son that you as a mother are serious about your religion. Then they'll take it seriously. How much do you strive in your life to give them a good education? You will even take riba based loans to make sure that they go into the right college. At least put half of that effort into your religion and you will see inshallah the fruits in your house. The way you strive for the dunya, strive for your children's deen and they will preserve their identity. Otherwise we're going to see what we're seeing. Our children leave while the children of kuffar alhamdulillah are becoming Muslim. Allah is replacing people because his religion does not wait for anybody. He does not wait for anyone. So take this as a warning, brothers and sisters. Distinguish yourself as a Muslim. Try your level best. Have that iman in your words, in your actions, in your appearance. Be Muslim. Live Islam. Speak Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, keep making dua and striving for the protection of your family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us to preserve our children and our grandchildren. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah wa aqimu salah.